yesterday somebody sent me a message requesting I do kind of a, I guess, overview of sylphs, what their strengths and weaknesses are, what different uses for them. Um, as you can see, I've got each of the refined sylphs. Now, if you don't have the refined sylphs, what I'm going to tell you will pretty much apply um, also to the normal, if you will, sylphs. Um, so first of all, we have here um, the Hercules, which is the reformed, refined version of what we used to call Gaia, what is now called Eve, your Electro Sylph. Now this Sylph, um, the advantages of this Sylph is it's extremely overpowered. Um, it does the most damage out of any Sylph, including Apollo and Hades. Um, this is what Sylph most people are going for first. Um, so as far as advantages, it's just, it's a monster. Um, it does have some, I mean, if you look at the, the damage it does here, 470% to a single enemy. Some downsides of it, it does not have any area attacks. Um, some of its attacks do a minimal damage, as you can see here, 240% uh, plus simultaneously deals 20,000 damage to enemy soldiers, but that's not really an area attack. It, you know, it that's basically like when you walk up to kick somebody and a little bit of the gravel that you kick at them uh, while you're kicking them happens to hit somebody on the side. Um, it's what they call splash damage. But some of the other skills that this guy has, I'll go into skills so you can see everything. Now, for me personally, I always try to keep the basic attack. And his basic attack is not super strong, but 165% for a Sylph is pretty good. Um, and the reason I always try to keep their basic attack is that I don't like when you're in the middle of doing attacks and all of a sudden all of your skills are on cooldown because then you can't do anything. I have that problem with my Athena because her basic attack got overwritten when I added a skill, so I don't have that one second attack in there anymore. This Jupiter's Wrath, this is pretty nice. It adds somewhat of an amnesia, has an 80% chance to make a random skill not available. So it's kind of like a very low-level weak amnesia. Sometimes this is um, really annoying when somebody uses this against you because it can take out your special or your Delphic. So that's a nice one, and 225% damage to a back row target um, is, pretty, is pretty decent damage, and it's got a low cooldown time of 8 seconds. So this one, you know, um, you can use pretty quickly. A lot of people question whether why I have Thunder Strike instead of one of the other skills that I'll show you in a minute. But for me, this skill is extremely useful um, for things like Necro um, and... Well, really, that's about it anymore since everything else got nerfed. But the the speed reduction this does is really nice. Plus, it does 230% damage, which is pretty good. And the one that people ignore this one for, and they tend to go for, is Shock Chain. As you can see, the damage, 187%, you know, is, is almost 50% less. So that is pretty considerable amount of less damage, which is why I don't like it. Um, and this one, it says, reduces all enemies' magic defense by 30% for three turns. The problem with this one is, and I'll, some people will doubt me on this, but I have done a lot of testing with this because some of my teammates have Shock Chain. This does not work in PvE, you know, when you're fighting um, in Dragon's Invasion or in uh, your MPD or, or stuff like that. However, if you are a person that gears yourself for player versus player this skill is excellent but I don't gear myself for player versus player so I don't I didn't really need it the skill I showed you earlier flash storm um, it does pretty nice damage 240 percent normally what I do if any of you have seen my videos where I, I'm doing um, world boss and that kind of thing I try to start out with thunder strike because with a 25 second cooldown, if you use this first, you'll be able to use it a second time later on. I start out with 
with the Thunder Strike, then I go for Jupiter's Wrath, and then in between that I'll normally hit my Brutality Rune, then use Flash Storm, and then the Delphic. As far as passives, um, this right here, this new passive, now this is only for Refined Sylphs, chance to increase your Awakening Points by 150 for one self. This only somebody had a question about this um, actually earlier today. This only works when you're in sylph mode. It doesn't work when your sylph is floating behind you. But I have seen this thing work so much, so frequently that I've been able to get in um, what would be the equivalent of almost two full sylph rounds against the, my world against the world boss, because you'll be sitting there watching. And all of a sudden, your awakening points will increase a little bit. And then you keep watching, and it'll increase again, and then again. You know, this thing does um, proc pretty frequently. Um, sometimes it doesn't, but I, for me, it, it procs enough to, that this one is really a very good passive. Um, this one almost everybody has on Stable Voltage. I'm not sure which one it comes. I can't remember now which one it is your original one, but I think it's this one. But both these passives are pretty good. Um, the only problem is if, and people question me about this all the time, why I don't um, stand in the fr in front of my troops so that unstable voltage activates. When you do double attacks, unstable voltage doesn't work because it lasts two rounds, which means if you do two attacks in a row, you just lost it. So there's really no point in me standing in front of my troops, um, just to further explain that again, since people keep asking me all the time about that. But that is a pretty nice one, um, especially when you're doing things like trying to solo Tower of Kings and stuff like that, where they're hitting you a lot of times in a row. Um, you can really build that up to 10 very quickly. Some of the other skills here chance to prevent an enemy crit next round to me I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody use that it's just a waste crit rate and crit damage I've never seen anybody use this on their Hercules either because 10% is not really that big of an increase and it uses 500 awakening points short circuit I believe is one of the original ones that Gaia comes equipped with when you first get it and that one is actually pretty good. I kind of wish I still had that one. Because um, as you can see, it does a splash damage of an extra 50% damage. Roll of Thunder. Shock Chain I explained already. This one I do see some people use. Um, I guess any time when you can gain more HP, uh, gain HP back is nice. But for me, you know, I wanted to go, since I'm, for, for all of my group stuff, I'm the tank and the main damage dealer, I just wanted to go balls out damage, which is pretty much what this setup is. Um, but some disadvantages of this, of this sylph, it's magic attack, which means it's somewhat weak against mages. Um, if you have a, a mage that is pretty high level, pretty high BR, um, chances are they've got a lot of resistance crystals for Electro equipped. Your Hercules may not do as much damage. However, sometimes that doesn't even matter because Hercules is just so damn OP. But that is not, in my opinion, this is not the best one for fighting mages. If I go into a battleground and I see a really high level mage and it's one that I know is going to attack me most of the time um, they stay away from me but s there are some high level mages that like to attack me um, this is not the self I would use against them but this overall is the best self out there um, just for overall damage dealing against players against uh, monsters against everything. Now, here we come to the refined Hades. Hades is great because it has this skill 
the Devour Soul that heals 50% of your damage dealt. And since it's 250% damage, it deals a pretty pretty damn good amount of damage. Um, but places you'd want to use this, mages. When you're fighting mages, this is an awesome thing to fight against mages. Um, for some aspects of PvE, this is really good too because of the fact that you can deal damage and heal yourself at the same time. Um, the only thing is it doesn't deal quite as much damage as a Hercules, but um, so Hercules is still going to be the thing that you want to focus on for things like Necro or for um, Sky Trail, God's Descent, stuff like that. But some of uh, so, some of those things, you know, maybe a couple of the, the levels in Sky Trail, a couple of the levels in God's Descent, um, if you're trying to solo things where you need to be healing yourself at the same time, this Hades or the Refined Hades is really really good for that and the skills I have for here this I find awe is is pretty nice um, because it does pretty hefty amount of damage and as you can see reduces targets awakening points by 300 this is really good skill for when you're fighting in um, Tower of Kings you get all those sylphs fighting against you let them awaken you, you know, if, if there's only one or two and you get them stunned and then you use this against them and then by the time they're cooldown, uh, by the time they're done being stunned and you've removed 300 awakening points from them, they can't use their special against you. So that's a pretty good skill. The Delphic here, 310% and that hits twice. And then it has a 50% chance to basically do a bleed effect. Not a real big bleed effect, but you know, it, up to 40,000 damage is, uh, is, is decent. This is another really high damage dealing, 230%, but it hits twice. And the, the good thing on this one is um, reduces the effects of healing by 50% for three rounds. Now, this doesn't always work against PvE. I'm not sure why. Um, it can get kind of frustrating. I, I was hoping it would work against the Dark Succubus, Dark Succuba, um, when I was fighting her, you know, trying to get rid of that 100k HP heal that she has. I was trying to cut that in half, but it didn't work. Um, but, but this is pretty nice when you're fighting against a mage and they're trying to heal themselves and they just can't because they've got this against them. And then this is just the basic attack, 170% damage, but one second cooldown. That, I don't even really know why I have that. It just, when I originally got Hades, just got all the passives, and that just happened to be one of the passives. I may change that out later, but I'm not sure. I don't. I don't like the way they do these skills, having to spend so much money on these damn things. Um, this right here, a lot of you may have gotten hit with this and not even realized what was happening. Um, this really comes into play for the Spirit of Dark. My team has not been able to complete Spirit of Dark yet, um, and a lot of it has to do with this right here. This is basically Chaos Rune. And it really procs a lot. If you have this on you, chances are pretty good that you're going to hit your teammates. And it happens that um, I don't have really strong server. And when I get hit with this, I usually end up one-shotting people on my team. So, you know, I try. <laughs> and when mages don't bring Puri with them and stuff, that kind of hurts. But anyway, so... This this sylph is really good for um, against mages. It's not that great against knights because it's a physical attack. And since knights usually have very high physical defense, this is not going to be your best option. However, you know with that heal and depending on the particular knight, um, they may not have dark resistance. And so you know this this may be good, but. Overall, this is not the best thing for fighting knights. 
generally not the best for fighting archers either since we tend to have um, high physical defense as well but not usually as high as knights normally against knights and archers you want to use hercules or athena slash apollo now this is a really cool looking sylph i don't see a lot of them out there um but the ones that are out there, they when they hit, they usually hit pretty hard, especially me being an archer, and this it deals magic attack damage. Um, it can hurt. But you get this. this. This, I don't really see many people using this for any PvE. This is mostly fighting against other players. Um, Apollo was a big thing when it first came out, but now with Hercules out... Uh, Gaia came out after that, and then with Hercule, the refined Hercules, um, just the damage just far outweighs what Athena can do. But Athena does have some nice skills. This dealing, this ray deals damage. It restores a very small percent of HP, but it does restore a little bit of HP. Helios blessing heals twenty percent of your HP, so I mean that could be. It can be decent if you have a lot of HP, but 20% of HP is not really that much. So, I mean, that's not that special. This, though, is what I find really nice. Divine Prayer. Um, the target's damage received increased by 5%, which is nice, but it also deals 200% damage to 2 to 4 random enemies. This um, Sylph is generally the best for AoE targets. When you, when you have a group of targets you can just keep hitting them over and over again the Delphic hits all targets beam sword one to two enemies it's a decent um, decent attack nothing really strong but then this deals to two to four enemies this deals to all enemies so this right here if you're going against groups um, sometimes arena sometimes this may be your best bet um, or TOK again this can be a really great thing in TOK because you're just hitting all four of them over and over again, even though the damage isn't quite as high as Hercules, since Hercules is only a single target um, attack, this may out, out damage it for, th for things with group attacks. Um, with our new catacombs that are coming out soon, they have basically from what i saw it's like a boss with four weakling underlings around it so you're basically going to be fighting a group for every level and something like uh, apollo might start coming to, might come into play a little bit more in things like that depending on how hard it is but also since it's magic attack not necessarily the best thing to fight against mages especially since it's attacks attack percentages are not that high you're not going to really hurt mages very much with this now if you're a free player one of the best things you can do for yourself is get yourself a dogzilla a uh, Cerberus or the Amazon Queen these have not quite as high attack high attack as the Gaia slash Hercules but as you can see 440% is is pretty hefty and that does damage to one to two enemies most of the time to two enemies so I mean it, it's not necessarily a single attack not of course it's not gonna hit the whole group but if you're fighting a mage this is a really good thing to fight a mage a good free way to fight a mage right here if you can't if you haven't been in, uh, lucky enough to get yourself a Hades this is your second best bet for fighting mages also not many people have fire resistance um, most people focus on electro dark and light resistance hardly anybody focuses on fire water or wind so you you take one of these in against a mage it eats them alive um, plus one of the things i love about uh, the amazon queen slash cerberus here um, i actually chose this before i started working on gaia because it does somewhat of area attacks. I've changed out a few skills since um, I've upgraded it. But um, you've got this. 145% damage is not a lot, but to all enemies. And um, 
basically a bleed of up to 20,000 damage over five rounds. 265% damage to front row, that's pretty good. This is a really weak bleed. I don't like it. I just got it to test it out when they first came out, and personally, I think this is sucks. This is kind of like Poison Arrow for archers. It's just really not worth it, but it's the lowest cooldown time I have, and I'm not, since I hardly use this at all, um, I'm not investing into it at all. But this skill right here is what is really nice. This deals 220% damage, which is pretty good, and then targets take 10% more damage for three rounds. So you throw this in, turn around and use your Delphic, and then you turn around and use this again, because the by then the eight second cooldown timers come down, and um, you're getting a 10% damage on top of that 220%. So you can do pretty pretty good damage right here with these couple of things, um, just immediate damage. And uh, like I said, this is really, really good against um, mages. I used to just destroy mages with this. Um, and it's just a cool looking thing. Some people don't like it, a little doggy running around behind you, but I think it's really cool looking. Increase your damage for 20%. I don't go for things like that because 500 awakening points for increase of damage of 20%, basically you're losing two to three hits just for that. I prefer to be able to stay in um, sylph mode longer, but you know, that's all up to up to you. 160% to two to three enemies. Burning strike, that's a single target. 210% plus a bleed. Another 500 awakening point consumption one. And another crap passive. But basically this this is great against mages. You can use if you don't have a Gaia, this is a great substitute in world boss. Um, or actually this is what I used to use in Necro um, when I was still trying to beat 15. I beat 15, 16, I think up to like 21 or 22 using Amazon Queen. Um, and then I started working more on the Gaia and then of course that just blows everything out of the water. But yeah, this is, this is a, this is a pretty good free self right here. Iris. Iris has uh, really come a long way, especially with this refinement. As everybody knows, it's you know great for healing. That's what it's meant for. So this is normally a tool for mages to have along with them. Um, but occasionally you do see knights or, um, or archers running around with these for some reason. Um, but I mean, your, your basic rain dance there is great. I've done over 200k heals with this, even though I have no Sepulchrum in this whatsoever. And that's a single target heal there. Um, I The reason I'm missing some skills here, I haven't finished def deciding what I want on here. But some really great skills that Triton has, this Ice Shield, it basically adds 30% of your HP to you. I mean, it says a shield absorbs 30% of your target, blah, 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 last three turns. It basically increases your HP by 30% if, if you just want to look at it the easy way. But you take 30% of somebody like me with 400,000 HP, that's 120,000 HP. So, you know, when I have somebody in my party that uses that shield on me as a tank that's nice because I just don't take any hits for a while. I don't take any damage until that shield wears off after three turns. So that's pretty nice. Um, some of the other things here. This actually has come into play. I've seen a lot in Sylph Arena, this binding thing. Um, 
it's not that big a deal when you're fighting somebody and they use it against you, but in Sylph Arena, when this procs, this can mean the difference between a win or a loss in Sylph Arena. Healing effects increased by 20%. I've never seen somebody use that. I think that's a complete waste right there. This is a decent little damage dealer. 145% to all enemies. Um, this is a good thing also, especially for mages, or if you're soloing things that uh, give you a lot of debuffs, this removes your debuffs. So that that is actually a pretty nice little thing there. But that's the problem I'm having is do I get that or do I get this shield? Um, it all depends on what this future brings as far as sylphs being used instead of troops. Once that, once we actually have that and I see thing, how things work a little bit, that'll help me determine what I want to add in. 300% to the enemy with the lowest HP. That can be pretty devastating right there. Now this says... I was just having a discussion with somebody a few days ago about this. Ensures the person with lowest HP dodges a critical strike. Basically, this is an illusion astral that's guaranteed to work for two turns. It's not worded very well, but you you dodge two hits in a row if this is activated on you. Reduce awakening point descent rate by 20 points for three seconds. Um, I don't see how that is possibly worth worth it because you're basically gaining 60 awakening points, which doesn't even give you enough. That doesn't give you enough time to do an extra skill. So that is basically eating up. Would eat up one of your slots here for nothing, absolutely nothing. But things this is good for. Um, if you're the main healer of a party, it's always good to have this with you. If you're trying to solo something that is adding debuffs or that you feel that it's more important to just stay alive rather than continue doing damage, um, this can be really good. The, the reason I have this, and um, I'm sure a lot of other people are doing the same thing, is in the future we won't have troops anymore. We'll be having um, three sylphs accompany us. And for me, I thought, well, that'd be pretty cool if I had, you know, a couple damage dealers and then throw in a healer next to me. And then we have last, but definitely not least, Medusa. Now, Medusa and Pan, by extension, are not the greatest of sylphs. Not many people have them, and there's a reason. They, they pretty much suck. Uh, especially Pan, it it's just it doesn't do a lot of damage, and since it's physical attack damage, you're really not going to hurt an archer or a knight with it very much. It doesn't add much, but the Medusa does have some really really nice skills that you can get. Um, Whispering Wind basically gives a 30% brutality rune to your entire team for three rounds. This is just massive. I had uh, normally I do around two million, anywhere from two to two and a half million damage with my Delphic Inspire, and I had somebody bring along a Medusa, and they used this before one of my Delphics, and I did over three million damage. So that's quite a boost. You know, added a, added that extra uh, six hundred thousand damage, which was pretty nice. I mean, three million damage just is massive. Um, so that's really good for PvP or PvE. This is what really makes the Medusa stand out now. Steals 500 awakening points from enemies who have morphed into their selves. Now, unlike the Hades skill, which just reduces the target's awakening points, this actually steals it, which means you when you use this against players, your awakening points go up by 500. So this is really, really nice. I mean, unfortunately, you only get to use it once, but when you do something like TOK, once again, 
you use this against them once they've awakened and that none of them can use their Delphic against you, which of course is very, uh, can, can be the difference between win or loss. 314% win damage to all enemies. Not that great for a Delphic. Enemy defenses reduced 50 points. That means all of their, um, all of their resistances not just win, but all of the resistances are reduced by 50 points, which is not that much, but this is an, a nice little damage. 136%, this is your basic attack. So things that this is good for. Personally, I would never go in to like Necro or Sky Trail or anything like that using this. Um, what I really wish is that if I had a, 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 one of the weaker players on a team if you have somebody that's weak and doesn't do a lot of damage, they can really increase your damage by bringing along a Medusa or bringing along a Cerberus for this Infernal Inflammation or with the Medusa, bring along for the Whispering Wind, adding, adding all that damage. So basically this is making you more of a monster than you already are. But against players, this is not really the greatest thing to use. Um, I'm Every time I come across one of these, I've come across uh, an orange one once or twice, and I just obliterate them. And, you know, yeah, it's not necessarily the Sylph. It could be the player as well. But there's a reason why people don't use these things. It's because they're just not that great. Um... I only made it because I just got so many star tier shards and so much star sand. I just uh, it had nothing else to do with it. So I said, screw it. I'll just make all six refined sylphs. Um, but the one place I have found this handy is Tower of Kings. If you're fighting a group with all four sylphs, you sylph right, you know, same time as them, of course, and then you use that steel against them. And all of their awakening points go down and yours goes up. So that that does come in really handy. Um, and uh, this is most effective really against mages since it's physical attack. So if you have a Tower of Kings um, where there's two mages that are equipped and then the other two are not equipped, doesn't matter whether knights, archers, whatever. But if there's but if if the only equipped people in T Tower of Kings are mages, this is not a bad bet for free for your free options because you can you know steal their awakening points and since it's physical damage everything you're doing um, does extra damage since mages tend to have low physical defense now I've done self arena uh, videos twice before um, I wasn't exactly sure what to say or do to cover all this, I hope I covered what um, what you were looking for for the person that requested this. Uh, I hope I answered all of your questions. If you have any more questions, or there's something specific you'd like to see me do with these sylphs, um, you know, just let me know. I don't really do much battleground anymore. I'll be capped on that in tomorrow or the day after, so I won't be doing battleground anymore. But um, you know, if you want to see me fighting one of my one of my buddies in my guild or something with this um they're usually willing to they're they're usually uh pretty helpful for that kind of thing um if you for some reason want to see sylph arena uh, specific setup with these just let me know anything you guys want to see let me know and i'll do my best to accommodate you